ADP has huge potential and has been on my watch list for quite some time. The share price has dropped by quite a significant amount over the last few days. So is this a buy now and should we be looking to add this into our portfolio? In today's episode, we're going to analyze automatic data processing. They also release their earnings, so we will take a deep dive into that. We'll look at how their revenue and bottom line net income has performed year over year over the last five years. We'll take a quick snapshot of the health of the company, looking at their balance sheet total cash versus total debt. We'll also compare how they have performed versus others in the HR industry and employment services on a total return basis. And we also want to see what are the institutions doing? Are they buying or selling this company? And this will tie all very nicely into that all important dividend safety score, as well as understanding some very important financial metrics about this company that you need to understand before investing. And as always, we will run it through our valuation model, getting to our intrinsic value and finding our acceptable buy price given that margin of safety. Now, it is essentially down 10% year to date, significantly underperforming the S&P 500. And if we take a look just over the last five days, it had a huge drop of 11%. So let's find out whether or not this is a company now that has reached our buy zone for us to add this phenomenal company, which will go through exactly why we like this. Straight away, it is towards the mid to lower end of the 52 week range, and it does offer a dividend of 2.33%. So is ADP currently a cheap price? Can we expect the price to double, triple over the next few years, as well as see that yield on cost grow to double digits? Well, shareholders who have been holding the company over the last 10 years would have seen growth of 223%, which is very positive to see over a 10 year period, especially when you realize that doesn't include those dividends reinvested so let's take a look very quickly at their earnings and see what happened so what we can see for the fiscal quarter of 2024 their revenue did grow seven percent year on year to 4.51 billion so it was around an 11 percent increase in non-gap net income to 860 or two dollars eight per share now analysts were expecting a lower eps so we can see they beat on eps but unfortunately they did miss very slightly on that revenue so in terms of forward looking guidance what did they say well for the forward year they did say they reiterate their current outlook on the revenue growth six to seven percent and earnings per share of ten to twelve percent now very quickly we can also see year on year how did they perform well year on year they beat their revenue by seven percent net income by ten percent earnings per share by eleven Very positive to see that net profit margin also going up as well as their operating income and their net change in cash. So lots of positives to note from this. Now, let's take a very quick look. What are the institutions doing? Well, 79% of institutional ownership in the company and we can see around 5 billion worth of shares were sold outflows over the last 12 months. But four times as much were bought by institutions, just over 20 billion. And we can see the largest part of this in Q2 of 2023, where around 13 billion shares were bought. So this is a company that institutions do like a lot. We can see around 79% institutional ownership, as well as a lot more buying than selling over the last 12 months. Do bear in mind, though, this isn't something that we use to form our investment decision, but it's always good to have as an added layer of review. Likewise, the same can be said with this when we're going to compare how ADP have performed versus others in the human resources employment services industry. So on a total return basis, just year to date, ADP, as we can see, are down 8.10%. That includes those dividends reinvested. Not great to see, especially when you look at some other competitors, although we do see only two which have been positive around 1% to 2%. So the industry as a whole has taken a hit this year. Now, in terms of over the last five years, which is a better indication, we can see ADP up in fact 77%. Positive to see, but do note it is one of the slower performers out of the industry. But as I always say, bear in mind, previous and historic performance isn't an indicator for future performance, but it's always good to see. So in terms of the business itself, were their top line revenue growth, bottom line net income growth, what can we find out? So... June 2019, 14.1 billion on the top line. And what we're looking for is 3 to 7% growth. 
June 2023, so their latest annual report, 18 billion. So very nice to see that increase on the top line. And when we take a look on a more granular level, we see more positive news with an increase in the top line year on year. Very positive and bear in mind, we'll look at the last 10 years too in percentage form soon. Net income, 2.3 billion in June 2019. 3.4 billion in June 23. So again, a nice increase on the bottom line as well as the top line. And again, on a more granular level, we do see those increases year on year. So, so far, so good when looking at that income statement, positive growth year on year over the last five years for ADP, top line and bottom line. Now, cash versus total debt, how do they look like as a health check for the company? Around 2 billion worth of cash and short term investments sitting on the balance sheet in 2019. Latest quarterly report from last week, 1.44 billion. So they're sitting on a little bit less cash than they did five years ago. Not necessarily a bad sign, but let's take a look directionally and numerically at their total debt. So 2.3 billion worth of total debt in June 2019, 3.7 billion in their latest quarter. So they're also holding a bit more debt than they did five years ago. Again, it isn't a company that holds a large amount of debt, which is positive to see. But do note cash decreased slightly while total debt increased slightly. So we will take a look at that now when we look at our financial metrics. So jumping straight in. Dividend safety score of 97, making it very safe. A market cap, 88 billion, making it a large cap company. Now, key metrics briefly for those that see a recession coming. Latest recession, 0709, they in fact increased their dividend. Negative 2.7% sales, which was above the average growth during 0709, which was negative to a greater degree for those in the S&P 500. And we can see, yes, it was a very bad return of negative 29%. But it did beat the S&P 500, which was down around negative 55%. So a little bit of a positive there to take for those that do see a recession incoming. Now, first thing to note, double digit dividend increase last year, double digit on average over the last five years and double digit over the last 20 years. Very, very positive to see something I love to see. And on top of that, we are expecting a dividend increase over the next few weeks. So we should be expecting another double digit increase. And what we can see, they're only two years away from gaining that dividend king status, which is for companies that increase their dividends year over year for 50 years or more. Very positive to see. And on top of that, what I love about double digit, not only is it very high, but on top of that, I always say a minimum of 4%. The reason for that, US inflation over the last 40 years was 4%. So anything less than that, you are in fact taking a pay cut and losing purchasing power. So very positive to see. And also ask yourself, when was the last time you received a double digit increase in your salary or other income producing assets? Now, dividend yield theory states a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average. So we have our first sign of undervaluation, 2.33 versus 2.02. .02. Remember, though, we don't look at any of these models in isolation and draw our conclusions towards the end of the episode. Likewise, forward PE 23 versus 28, another sign of undervaluation. And we can see the PE of ADP higher than that of the sector PE. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, it is trading towards the 52 week low. But do bear in mind a 52 week low on any company does not signal undervaluation. Likewise, 52 week high does not signal overvaluation. Earnings versus free cash flow, reviewers probably sick and tired of hearing it. We tend to ignore earnings. It is here for investors that like to see it, but it is susceptible to manipulation by management through their accounting. And we do have many videos where we do take some examples to run through. So on the free cash flow, what do we look for? 60% or lower. The reason for this, it means management are able to offer those double digit dividend increases we love to see. For the large part, this company has barely really been over 60% by a large margin. 67, the highest, which we saw in 22, then it dropped to 55 in 23, with 24 expected even lower. So I am expecting very soon a very nice double digit increase again for this company. Earnings per share, as we can see, again, data available for those that like to take a look, but we'll draw your attention to the free cash flow per share. 317, 2014, nearly three times growth to 23, 879, with 2024 expected to be even higher. So very positive to see it is going in the right direction, albeit very slowly. It is very positive to see. Sales growth, you hear this very often on the channel. Three to seven percent is what we aim for year on year. And as we can see here, in fact, we are getting that every single year over the last 10 years, bar that negative 11 percent drop in 2013. So how does that compare on a numerical basis? Well, nine and a half billion of sales in 2013, 
16.5 in 2022. I love to see that consistent increases year on year. So it is very positive to see, especially when we are looking over a 10 year time frame. Shares outstanding. Yes, we love it when companies do share buybacks, returning excess cash to our pockets. Now, they don't do the largest amount of share buybacks, but it is good to see very, very small amounts year over year. And they aren't essentially diluting your position as a shareholder by issuing shares. So I would take this as a positive. Now, ROIC, one of my seven golden dividend metrics, it is very typical for companies I hold to have a ROIC of 10% or more. The reason for this, it gives me faith management are able to effectively allocate their capital. And what we can see for ADP, 56% in 22, 64 in 23, very, very positive is a very strong sign of management. Operating margin, free cash flow margin, very positive. What's also good to see on the operating margin, it is in fact increasing year on year, which is great to see. And we have a very consistent 15 to 20% free cash flow margin. Again, very strong for this company. Now, net debt to earnings before interest tax, depreciation, amortization. This is something that we would flag if, for example, a company has a significant amount of debt and a very small cash position. No real worries for ADP. Three signaling the maximum we like to see. So three, the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. 2023, in fact, it was 0.28. 24 expected 0.39. So no worries whatsoever with that dividend safety from this company. And on the right, purely showing the percentage of a company's financing from debt as opposed to equity. As always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe and bell to be continually notified of these videos as they drop. And if you want to grab a copy of the valuation model we're about to run through to run through your own companies and your portfolios, get your intrinsic value or acceptable buy price, then do click on the pinned comment below. Now, typically, Graham's valuation is the first model that we use, as you've seen in previous videos. But for companies where they are fast growing, very strong on the top line, it is slightly outdated. So we won't use this for ADP, but how it would work for viewers who are new. We put the stock ticker, the earnings per share, growth rate per analyst estimates with that current yield on AAA corporate bonds to get an intrinsic value. So the first model we're using is the multiples valuation model companies in a similar sector and size. We have paychecks and insperity. We can see their stock price, EPS, P multiple. Get the average, multiply that by the EPS of ADP to get a multiples valuation price of $189. Now, when we take a look, that is slightly lower than the current trading price and slightly lower than the 52 week low. So based on that model, we are seeing some signs of overvaluation. Bear in mind, though, we don't look at any of these models in isolation and we'll draw our conclusions towards the end of the episode. We then move on to the dividend discount model where we have the yearly dividends, very nice growth around 12.78% on average. And we are expecting over the next few weeks, a very nice double digit increase again. Growth rate forward looking, I've estimated 6%. As always, if you believe it's too optimistic or even too conservative and you grab a copy of the model, you can play around with these figures. So this gives a DDM price of $265, slightly lower than the 52 week high, but higher than the current trading price, showing signs of undervaluation in the current market. We then move on to the third and final model, the DCF model, where we have our free cash flows. Average growth rate at 5.8 with forward looking as analysts estimating 14%. In conjunction with the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt and we arrive at the equity value. Divide that by the shares outstanding gives a DCF price of $260. Again, slightly lower than the 52 week high, but again, showing signs of undervaluation in the current market. So our intrinsic value is the average of the three models that we have just run through. And again, if you do enjoy the content and value is being provided, hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow and increase that community and hit the bell if you want to be continually notified of these videos. So the current price around $215. Now, typical margin of safety that I would advise would be 10% if you believe it has a wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward looking data. It's really up to you as an investor whether you can justify that for any of the companies we go through. If you do, then a 10% margin of safety would essentially be the current trading price at around $214. Now, if you were looking for a 15% margin of safety, your acceptable buy would be around 202 if we can see that is right there at the 52 week low. Now, personally, this is a company that I do want to add to the portfolio. It is one that's been on the watch list for quite some time. And I would be looking at a 20% margin of safety, more so due to the economic conditions that we're facing, that I do believe this stock is trending downwards after that big drop we did see over the last five days. And alongside the macroeconomic conditions, I do see this stock trading lower slightly. Whether or not it hits that buy price, it is what I'm looking to add to my portfolio. In terms of Wall Street, they are forecasting some very nice upside to $267, even higher than our intrinsic value. 
As always, though, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is ADP now looking like a fair value for you? Are you looking to add, sell, or even if you're purely on the sidelines speculating? As always, if you want to grab a copy of the model to get your own intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your portfolio, do click on the pinned comment below. If you want to join us in the Discord, click on the Patreon link below where we're talking about all buys and sells in the market last week and looking ahead to the future weeks. And don't forget to like, subscribe if you've enjoyed the content. As always, have a great day. Catch you on the next episode and take care.